Welcome uh, to Core Finance, where I'm joined by Paul Griffiths, who is CEO at Predator Oil and Gas. How are you today, Paul? I'm good. Good morning. Uh, I imagine you were on a beach uh, in somewhere in Trinidad, but apparently you're not. But uh, you've got plenty to update <laughs> no. us about uh, your various assets throughout the world. Yeah, I wish there was a beach in Trinidad. <laughs> so uh, what's going on? What's in, in which order would you like to take this? Okay, we'll kick off with Trinidad um, as we've just returned from a, a site visit to the proposed uh, CO2 enhanced oil recovery injection and production facilities. So um, the good news there is that our CO2 supplier will install the CO2 delivery system to the wellheads. Um, so that's a major um, uh, a benefit for us from the engineering side to have the expert actually deliver the CO2 actually to the wellheads. There's no engineering issues and all is on track. Uh, to deliver the long lead, lead items such as the CO2 injection pumps, etc., to the site by the end of January. Um, the improvement process is continuing also, but will not hold up the delivery of the equipment to the site. So, in summary, all the agencies in Trinidad are, are, are aligned with us in believing that this is very exciting for Trinidad in a success case. It could significantly uplift onshore production in Trinidad, which hasn't been done for, for many years now. And the other thing I think to mention in the current climate of um, lower oil prices and, and turmoil in the markets is that this project is still very robust from the economic point of view in the sense that we can use our um, available tax losses or, or, or our local partners available as tax losses, which means that we can start producing um, uh, as low at $27 a barrel and um, produce as low as 110 barrels a day if oil price, uh, uh, say, is around $55 a barrel. So that's all positive news in terms of where we are currently in the oil price scenario and the cycle. And has this happened uh, on schedule, all, all this uh, activity? Yeah, everything's on, sh on schedule. So, um, uh, you know, things are moving along at, at the pace we thought they move along. Um, it's very important to get all the ducks in a row on this because there's no room for error. So we tend to um, maybe over engineer what we're doing because we don't really want to make any mistakes at this stage it's better to get a, a good result because it's so important uh, going forward for upscaling this um, to other fields and within the current field in trinidad right it's vital to get this right okay and uh, is, um, further afield what, what's going on in the other in your other assets well of course we announced um uh, the gursey permit negotiations with a, a signing ceremony um in due course shortly and for us as a management team, that's very important because our management's had a long history in Morocco, been very successful in bringing big companies in and getting carries in wells and also de-risking potential gas developments uh, in, in the onshore. So that's good news for us in, in, and good news for our shareholders. We're just nine kilometers from a gas pipeline to Europe. It's cheap and easy drilling compared to some of the uh, targets in onshore Morocco. And um, we're looking to line up a, a rig uh, for Q3 2019. It's also the sort of project that will attract and is attracting quite a lot of interest from our peer companies because it's a play. It's a project that's very well understood by the industry because it's um, similar to the multi-TCF gas resources all around the Mediterranean that have been discovered in, 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 in the offshore. So the industry understands the play, so we're not fighting a battle there. Right. And so, I mean, uh, and anything from the Irish area? Uh, yeah, there's a um, pretty positive announcement by the incoming operator, uh, both uh, in terms of an RNS they released and in terms of press coverage that they um, facilitated. And that operator, uh, the incoming operator, confirmed that the current um, deal to, with the sale of the Shell interest to uh, the Canadian Pension Fund and the million will take place or closed um, by the end of the year. But more importantly, they actually stated that they were interested in doing deals with those parties around uh, the current facilities, which included uh, potentially taking equity interests in, in, in the companies. So that um, validates, obviously, our position adjacent to the current gas field and the infrastructure. But I think more importantly, from our shareholders' point of view, is that we've now advanced the Ramhead gas project in um, the Celtic Sea, and we've done the first reservoir engineering ever attempted on the original marathon gas discovery there, which has helped to de-risk the potential for that gas to be taken to shore 
and landed at the in-sale facilities at Inch. And that's important because um, in the high in the high side case, um, the reservoir engineering predicts that this field could come on at 400 million cubic feet a day and deliver a TCF of gas in the first 12 years from just 10 development wells. So obviously that now rivals um, our Corrib and our Corrib project as the second sort of plank in our strategy to develop gas offshore island. It also sets us well apart from any other gas explorer offshore island in the sense we now have discovered gas that is capable of being commercially developed. So you've got the potential of being uh, producing on multiple from multiple sources uh, for 2019. Well, that's the, the, the always been the strategy is to develop the gas assets both in uh, Morocco and in Ireland to a stage where they're adjacent to infrastructure, obviously. But that's going to attract a major player. You know, one single asset on its own does not, but a combination of these assets will will attract the right kind of people who want to develop gas through European infrastructure. And the commercial model is very sound, which makes it even more attractive to potential farmers and partners. So we're very confident that you know, during 2019, we will attract partners into these projects. OK, well, we'll see how that goes. Paul Griffiths, CEO at Predator Oil & Gas, thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much.